Hello and welcome back to another episode on Quart Farm. We are continuing the harvest that we started in, pre in the previous episode. And I just about have the, a full trailer of barley. I just uh, wait for Zach to turn around and then he can unload. And I'm gonna take it to the silo. And in the meantime, while he was while he's harvesting, I was checking out the uh, what's available for tractors on the market at the moment, but nothing in our price range comes up. I mean, nothing in the price range and the horsepower and the weight requirement to replace our John Deere if, and I repeat, if it needs to be replaced. Okay, that's us full. Yeah, see, I don't have, I don't have any power. It, it just kind of dies on me. That's gonna have to be sorted out soon because I do need a bigger tractor. I mean, a big tractor for uh, mowing and yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Because uh, the two mowers that we are running consume quite a lot of power. I'm pushing the pedal to the floor. And this is all we get out of it. So yeah, something is definitely wrong with this John Deere because it should have plenty of power. 185 horsepower should be plenty. And it's not, you know. Again, pedal to the metal. And this is all that happens. But I guess this tractor should have a new theme song. Let's open the grain door. And the theme song should be Every Day I'm Struggling. Do, 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 do. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding, but. Yeah, it really needs a thorough service or we need to replace it, I'm not sure. Of course, uh, the cheaper is always the first option, so I will go and uh, check at the dealers and uh, get the tractor checked see if we can fix it somehow maybe it's just a minor thing you know maybe it's just a clogged uh, fuel filter or something like that or maybe it's a clogged air filter i'm not sure i'm not sure if you seen but uh, there are uh, fans for cooling the engine you know every tractor has a fan in front and uh, now they are making reversible fans so they are not pushing uh, I mean pulling air in the engine to cool it off and you can reverse it so it pushes air out and it pushes all the debris that got caught in the mesh uh, so yeah it's it's very interesting such a simple solution you know, reversing the fan, but such an effective one to easily and safely clean the the front grill. Okay, this is getting empty. Let me close it. But looking at this, okay, it is dirty, but it doesn't look to be clogged up. No, I can see the engine, so it's not... It's not fully clogged. So I haven't loaded one trailer and I think I'm going to exchange the John Deere for the Massey Ferguson just because of the state of this tractor
and I am gonna put it straight into the workshop so I can open the hood up and see what's going on underneath and the sheep are working nicely I can see there's almost an, a full, another full pallet on the tray over there and while I have this turned on I will try to put it on to the ramp over here and for the time being I'm going to put uh, these rollers in the corner over here this is not their designated space but I will put it over here because I don't really have much time to to go around and put it into the shed yeah this Massey is a lot more nimble compared to the John Deere at the moment interesting interesting So the Massey has 170 horsepower and it should be, it still should be good for this uh, grain carting. And I believe that harvesting speed is 9 kilometers per hour. Got it just in time. I'm not sure what Zach's gonna do right now. Okay, he stopped for the unloading part. And that's it. The combine empty. And again, I want to get ready somewhere around here because the field is long and I mean the longest at this part of the stretch. So it uh, also fills up the grain, um, the grain, not cart, but grain, grain hopper uh, the fastest. found the best way to follow the combine to unload is to follow the swath then it's approximately in the middle and also you're not driving over the straw so you're not compacting it down and make it difficult for the baler to pick up so looking at this field we are gonna have a lot of straw a whole lot more than we than we are going to need so I was thinking that maybe next time we plant a crop that doesn't leave straw so we plant it in here in the big field and this way we can uh, put on quote unquote money crop something that will bring us a lot of money and 
we can use to enrich our bank account. But yeah, because we already have quite a lot of bales in the in the bale shed up at the top of the farm. So they may not need, we may not need more. Yeah, so what would be the perfect cash crop? I know canola sells for a, a nice amount of money and it's also easy to harvest. There may be some more opportunity to put on maybe sunflowers. Because we are going to need we are we're gonna have to buy a header for the corn harvest is gonna be very soon. It's already around the corner. And the same header can be used to harvest sunflowers. So yeah, maybe sunflowers. I'm not sure. Maybe we can take a look and start, uh, I don't know, a production at our farm. That is also an, an interesting thought. Alright, the trailer is practically full, so I'm gonna go and unload. Put the ranges down. So the Massey also struggles, but not that much. Not not as much as the John Deere. Yeah, yeah, nah. A uh, big difference. In the John Deere, I would already be switching gears to lower ones. Yeah, so I've unloaded it into the grain silo and these are the straw bales we have at the moment and we're gonna have a lot a lot more after we bale the field over there. And also mind you it is going to be a lengthy process to bale that field and bring all the bales back. And so yeah I am looking forward to that. but otherwise yeah very good a very good yield so far I think we have over 60,000 liters in the grain bin but the question is is the convoy gonna be full before it reaches the end or not Everybody take a wager now. But I don't see the beacons. Usually the beacons are a sign that the combine is getting full and I need to get closer. But that's already a good sign. And he made it. Awesome. Yeah. I was not aware he was gonna reverse. Get away. And the field is getting shorter now. So that means there are more passes before the grain hopper gets full. So what I like, what I like to do, is uh, start filling the trailer from the front, 
so it uh, puts some weight on the hitch and then slowly creep forward until it's uh, loaded evenly all the way and I'm thinking the combine is also gonna need a thorough service and the header after we're done with this year's harvest we only have a, a cornfield left to do which is not as big as this one but it's still big and it still needs to be done and turn round I want to be driving as little as I possibly can on the straw swath unless it's an emergency We are probably doing second to last unloading. The hopper is pretty much full and we are gonna fit everything in one trailer so that's good and we are coming to the end of the field which is also very good. So the yield at the bottom of the field was not as good as the top because of the soil type. I have checked in the meantime while I was waiting for the combine and yeah it says that the barley uh, doesn't thrive on the soil type that is down here at the bottom of this field but on average we got around I would say 100-105% uh, yield from this field so yeah it's good I have also checked the state of our... Yeah, I know it's heavy. So I have also checked the state of our slurry lagoon and it's completely full. So when I end this uh, harvest I'm going to take the machines back to the farm. And then I'm going to hook up a um, slurry tanker and take a few loads. I believe on the grass field, I'm not sure, that we mowed and I need to take a few loads to be sold at the, uh, what's it called, at the uh, biogas plant, so the BGA. So Zach took the combine to the top of the field when where I can unhook the header. And I am going to go to the farm via this road. And we can also take a quick peek at our cornfield. That is probably going to be harvested in the next episode. I hope. Yeah, I do have to check how much grain I have. Did, did I empty three or four trailers now? I'm not sure. Is this the fourth one or the, or the third one? Either way, it is a very good yield. I really can't complain. You have barley for days. Months. 
maybe even years. But no, we're gonna sell it before it comes to years. Okay, the last load is in the grain silo. And we have 89,000 liters of barley. So that effectively means we had four trailers. Because it's around 20,000 liters per trailer. And yeah, I would say that is a, a great yield. Very nice. Very good. Ooh, no. Okay. What am I doing? I am rearranging the farm. <laughs> yeah, I know, but... I should probably be more careful about the trailer reversing. Good. As I said, the Zac has already left me the combine at the top of the field. Now I do need to take this off and now the other side for the hoses. Okay, this is, this is freed up. And now for the tricky parts to get it onto the trailer. So on some trailers you can orient yourself on the wheel because it's uh, straight in the middle, but this one is not. So I think I, I think this is lined up enough. Carefully, carefully. Yeah, okay, I can see the the pin here. Let's reverse a bit, and this should be perfect. Let me unhook and reverse and yes, perfect. I'm not gonna wash or refuel the combine because the um, field 56 that has corn in it is not as big as it. This one was field 57. So I don't really have have to plan too much ahead. Oh, we have a lot of eggs. Cool. We're gonna have to take them to the sell point sometime soon so they don't go bad. Did I reverse in? Ah, too late. I'm already <laughs> lined up to go straight in. And 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 turn the lights off engine off and out the header on the other hand is not gonna be used anymore unless we go help someone out but otherwise I think it's not gonna be used anymore so I am gonna clean it and I am going to put it into the workshop so we can make a service in all the debris out, clean the dust, uh, re-grease the joints and every moving part. So it's ready for the next part for next year and also it's ready, uh, I mean it's prepared so there is no moisture inside any joints or moving parts so it doesn't rust and it also doesn't damage the seals because water in on the seals and it if it freezes during the winter it may cause damage and we want to avoid that 
This is not a new combine, so we have to take extra steps to keep it running, keep the operation smooth. And I think this is, is good. Let me just look in so I do have space in between the combine and the plow. Slowly does it. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. This is a racing <laughs> a racing saying. Alright. Now for the last part today, it has been a long day and I still want to do the slurry spreading because we have the full slurry tank and it can't wait anymore. So yeah, I'm gonna show you just a little bit of this operation and the rest I will do off screen. Otherwise the episode will go on and on and on for hours and hours. And here is our trusty sprayer, I mean slurry spreader. This is not a sprayer. the PTO so the grass in this field has not regrown yet and this is why we're gonna spread some slurry on it to increase our yield and I think that is going to be another hay harvest For, so uh, yeah, we have around 250,000 liters of silage, so that's enough. And we will have a lot more hay because we may expand the sheep herd and uh, hay goes to rabbits, it goes to sheep, it goes to cows. So yeah, hay is an all-time favorite for most of our animals. Alright, let's hook up the hoses from here to here. Engage the pumps. Hoses off here and here. And into the field we go.
think we are just about empty on the slurry tanker. So with this, I will continue off screen. Yeah, that's it. We're empty. Uh, I will continue off screen. I would like to thank you all for watching, all you good people. And I wish everything good for you, the best. And see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.